Hi guys, I hope you can hear me now. Can you hear me? I'm ready. Let me know. I'm going to wait and see if uh, you can hear me and I can start with the lecture. I'm sorry about uh, all of this. So uh, it's Okay. I just approve it. That's good. Let me know if you are there, my friends. My name is Dr. Segal Jacobson. There is somebody else in the live applications. Okay. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? I can see your comments. Hello, doctor. I can see your comments. I can see your comments. Yeah, that's good. Tell me when you're ready and I will start. I hope everybody are healthy in these difficult times. I'm Yeah, so I'm gonna, hi, Dr. Osama, how are you? We'll be right in one minute, I'm gonna start my lecture. My name is Dr. Sigal Jacobson, it's 11 p.m. here in Australia. Uh, I'm gonna speak about composite veneers from start to finish, mainly how to work with a system called U-veneer and U-veneer is a system that used by thousands, tens of thousands of clinics around the world. And I'm very proud to say that I invented it for my own need as a dentist. Uh, it is sold uh, by Ultradent. And today I'm gonna give you all the tips and tricks of how to work with the system. But not only that, we're going to talk about how to select uh, the right shade for composite, which is a big challenge. I will also show you some tips and tricks on composite in the anterior area. So let's start. 
Create natural aesthetic with composite. And uh, uh, very important for me to say the word natural. Uh, the, world, the word natural is important for me because I like natural beauty and I think the whole world is going toward more natural. I believe with composites, we can, if we are very good at it and we learn with experience, we can create very natural looking aesthetics. Uh, my lecture today will have include a lot of tips. And the first tip I want to give you is uh, take a good photography course. A month ago, I took a course by Milos Mildanov. You can follow him on Instagram. Those are photos that I took in the course. Um, and it's very important to, because with composite, sometimes with photos, you see your mistakes. And, something that the eye cannot see as well. So a good photography course is, uh, is a pro important. Uh, that's the Uvenir system. We're gonna talk about it in the second half of the lecture. Uh, it's a template system to create direct veneers, but not only veneers. You can create uh, mock-ups. You can create your temporary restorations for porcelain veneers, class five, diastema closure, I will show you how to work with the kit. So for you who have the kit, you will learn a lot of tips and tricks. And for you who don't have the kit yet, uh, you might have it in the future and uh, you will hear from the inventor uh, some tricks of how to get the best of the kit. Let's start with a, a survey they done in 2015 in the United States and in seven different states with various income levels. I think they checked about 20,000 people. And they found that one in four patients, people, avoid smiling due to the condition of their mouth and teeth. 23% are embarrassed. And when they ask them why, 59% said it is the cost. That's why they're embarrassed to smile. And I can see it also in my, my clinic, a new patient that they come with all sorts of problems like, like what you see here, gaps, crooked tooth, uh, white brown patches, old stain composite, cheap teeth, reverse smile, all of those are indication to do composites. Uh, dentists avoid, unfortunately, they, they avoid doing composites. They will advise to do set of eight porcelain veneers or six porcelain veneers. Most of the time the patient will resist because he doesn't want his teeth grinded and he cannot afford it. Uh, this is where composite come into place and doing composite for the past 20 years, uh, I can tell you they have longevity is very high. It's 89% survival rate in five years, whereas porcelain veneer is 91% in five years. Uh, that's a very high longevity. Those are studies. And I don't need a study. I can see it for my clinic. My composite veneers, they're still there. Yes, sometimes they will need adjustments, a little bit polished, but nothing major. What is the difference between Portland veneer and composite veneers? Uh, Portland veneer, you have to reduce uh, teeth. We have to reduce about half uh, 1.5 millimeter from incisal up to two millimeter and 0 0.5 millimeter, you have to reduce buccally. Uh, composite veneer, sometimes I don't even reduce anything from the tooth, zero. I can do single tooth. I don't have to do set of eight teeth because composite material break the light, refracts the light more close to enamel than porcelain. That's why we can do more natural looking teeth. Uh, porcelain veneer is irreversible when, once it's, fin it's done. Uh, you cannot grow enamel back, and if it's fractures, you're in a big problem. Composite veneer, you can always uh, fix in the chair. It's a phase treatment. They can always do porcelain veneers later. You leave the patient future options. Porcelain veneer will not wear down, whereas composite will wear down. And that's very important for people who are grinding their teeth uh, or they have edge to edge. Uh, you will not do porcelain veneer because grinding teeth, uh, they can delaminate the, the porcelain veneer, they can fracture it. Um, whereas with composite veneer, with time, they will wear it down as with the teeth as they go. 
Porcelain veneer is a very high cost, almost like a crown, and composite veneer are much cheaper. That means that more patients can afford it. That means for your clinic that you can make more income. Also, a lot of patients, when you do composite veneers, they will be so happy because you fix their problem with only one tooth. It didn't cost them so much. They will refer you the whole family, and I can see it. It happens with, and porcelain veneer has a lot of contraindications. If, for example, if a patient has a periodontal disease, I will not invest in porcelain veneers if they have a, a, a occlusion that is not perfect. Uh, if they have, if the young patients, I will not do porcelain veneers. I will save their teeth. Uh, composite veneer, there is hardly any contraindication. There is two contraindications that I will mention only. Uh, one, when there is not enough enamel to bond to, for example, in bulimic uh, cases, when they wear off their, or in, in cases that they wore off their enamel. Because composite veneers, they rely on bonding. Whereas porcelain veneer, you can also do wrap it. You can wrap the porcelain, do like three quarter crowns. Uh, and the other contraindication for composite veneer is when patient has a very high expectation rate. Um, they want really white teeth, they want a set of beautiful teeth, and they can afford it. Then I will go to do minimally invasive porcelain veneers. Many dentists tell me I can, if I will uh, do porcelain veneers, stop doing them, I will actually lose money. Uh, I can show you by this uh, diagram that you're actually gaining more when you do composite veneers. And I don't know the prices in your countries, but let's say porcelain veneer is $500, then, compo dollar, then composite veneer will be $120 according to that. Porcelain veneer is two hours, and composite veneer is half an hour per tooth. Porcelain veneer for one tooth, you have expenses of $120 for study model, wax up, impression, provisionals, Composite veneers have five dollars. It's even too much. So per hour, you will make, you will earn more doing composite veneer at your clinics. Now, let's summarize about composite veneers. They're very natural looking. They're minimally invasive. It's additive dentistry. They're affordable. Uh, direct chair side repairs is possible. It leaves future treatment option and it will not wear the opposing teeth. How come so much of us, including me in the, in the past, were reluctant to do them, were afraid to do them, not doing them as much as we should? And the reason is that creating aesthetic with composite is one of the most challenging procedure in cosmetic dentistry because it requires artistic ability. It takes a lot of time. Uh, it's very hard for us to choose the right shade, especially many clinics, they work with one composite. Uh, so we find it challenging and we refuse to do them as we should. We are not artists uh, as well. So well, a lot of us, we are good dentists, we are good engineers, but we're not a good artist. It's very hard for us in half an hour, one hour to create masterpiece of composite. This is when I created the Uveneer. It's a template system uh, to create the anatomy fast and quick. But it's not enough to have Uveneer. You also have to choose the right shade of the composite. You have to also have to prepare the tooth right. How much do I prepare? How do I select the right shade? How do I create the perfect anatomical shade. So dentists ask me how much to prepare for composite veneers. What is the preparation guide? Well, it is not like porcelain veneers. There is no rules. You are reducing according to the need. And I will explain it in one second. First of all, there is no incisal reduction. Do not remove anything from the incisal like when you do porcelain veneers. You see, this is for porcelain veneers. Do not do that. You don't need finishing lines. You don't need to do chamfer or shoulder, nothing. You can do knife edge finish. And you prepare according to the need. 
and always rough the enamel. If you, even if you don't, if the tooth is intruded and you don't want to remove anything from the tooth, you always have to rough the enamel. This will increase retention. Plus, you always have to etch. Even if you have generation seven, generation even eight, the self etching you do, you still have to etch. It will increase. Studies show that it will increase the retention. So how much, what does it mean preparation according to need? It depends what do I want to get and depends on the situation. If I have, a, a, the tooth is intruded, if I don't want to change the color, I just want to change the morphology. Sometimes I don't even remove anything. I just rough the tooth. If I have my discoloration, I'll remove a little bit more. If I have protruded tooth or very dark tooth, I will have to do more deep preparation. And that's preparation according to the need. And I'll give you one tip as well. If you don't cut back enough, the dark tooth sometimes can reflect. And if this is happen and you apply the composite and you can see the dark tooth underneath, don't worry, rough the composite, reduce a little bit and do second layer with the same shade. The second layer will mask. And if you still see it, rough it again and do a third layer. It's the same like when we paint a wall, we do three layers, or when I do my nail polish, the third layer will mask. Now the question is, how do I select the right shade of composite? And that's uh, experience. And I'm gonna start with that to tell you that final shade of composite when you apply it on the tooth, will be affected by the underlying tooth that will reflect through the composite. So if I choose A1, it doesn't mean that it will finish A1 because the tooth underneath will reflect and change the color. When we light cure, the color of the composite sometimes become more dark, so the value will increase. When we polish as well, it will be more gray. And also the final thickness of the composite depends on the thickness of the composite. This will affect the final color. And these are examples of different composites with different value. Value means how much they translucent. And we'll talk about the value. So I came up with five steps of how to do a good shade selection. The first one is experience. Practice, practice, and practice. Don't change your composite every two, three months because somebody came with a good deal. Uh, stay with your composite. Start adding more brands, and I will talk about this why. But it takes about two years to get used to your composite. So don't try to understand that it's not an immediate. I'm in a situation now that I can look at someone and tell him, you have Ivoclar A2. Uh, just because I'm already recognized the color that I have in my tool, in my draw. And that's only with time. Keep it simple. Don't buy 26 colors. You don't need to, you don't need uh, The study shows that 90% of the patient will be the UA. So they will be A1, A2, A3. So stay with very minimal amount of composite from A1, A colors, I mean, A1, A2, A3, I have A3.5, A4 if you have an elderly patient, I love the B1, and then I have also bleach white and one translucent shade. But I have those colors from different brands. I have about six or seven brands in my clinic. Why? Because A1 is not A1, is not A1. Look at this. Uh, three composite on the right side. They all be one. Do they look to you the same? No. They are different. Some of them has high value, low value. Some of them will look a little bit different. That's why I need different brands because every brand has a different value. How much grayness, how much is translucent. For example, Tokayama is very high translucency. It's more chameleon. Uh, Amaris by Voco, or what else do you have? Maybe you recognize 3M. They are more opaque. 
So it depends what you want to get. The first thing I will say is create your accurate shade guide tabs, because we all rely at the moment on Vita Shade Guide, which is meant to be for porcelain. It's not with the, the same composite that you have. And how many times we took the A1 Vita Shade Guide and has no connection to your composite. Um, so I created an accurate shade guide from my composite. I will show you how to do it with the UV near. And then I just glue them to the those sticks and write the number. And the last thing which, which I came up with was, and this is the most important thing in my opinion, is to create direct mockups uh, for shade, shade selection. What does it mean, create direct mockups? You apply the composite on a moist tooth, don't dry them too much so they will not be white. Apply the composite directly on the tooth that you want to work, not on the tooth next to it, because every tooth will reflect different light and different color underneath. Apply the same thickness that you think that you're going to finish, because different thickness of composite will look different at the end. And then ask your opinion what she thinks. And I will give you another tip. Don't overuse the enamel shades. The enamel shades tend to look gray. I use the enamel shade only if I want to decrease the value and I use it in very, very thin layer. I don't use it for two millimeter. Our enamel is about two millimeter. I'm not going to put two millimeter of enamel shade. I will put maybe 10%, just the last very thin layer. Uh, on top. Now, how to create anatomically correct shape? We need to do the three fascial planes, the lobes, the vertical and horizontal groove, and the pericamata, they all have to be integrated. For me, it was a problem. It took me a lot of time. Sometimes when I finished, I had to polish everything. And when I polished, I removed everything that I created. And the whole uh, outcome was very flat. This is how I came up with the Uveneer system. And the Uveneer system is already about five years or maybe six now in the market, uh, used by thousands of dentists around the world. You have it also in your countries, it's sold by Ultradent. And it's, it's a kit that made from dentist to, to a dentist. I created it for my own need. I couldn't find any solution that will create composite veneer in a fast and, and predictable time. And I decided that I have to come up with a solution to this because I love composite. I can see how much they can change uh, patients' uh, lives, even in smiles. So I, uh, apply, I went to engineers and we created the kit. And that's the Uveneer. This is on the two centrals. And I'm going to show you now how it works. So that's the kit, one of them. There is two sets of teeth, upper and lower teeth. Premolar to premolar. First, you prepare the tooth. Of course, you remove the carriers. Don't prep too much. And then you put separation between the teeth. Uh, you can use Teflon tape, cellulose strip. I do not use wedges. And you etch. You will etch for 15 seconds. And you apply the bond. You wait for it to evaporate, the alcohol, and then you cure it with the light. I urge you to buy good lights. Uh, don't buy those lights, the cheap light from the internet. There is a, from the eBay, there is a big difference. And you apply the composite directly on the tooth. You do one tooth at a time. You press the uveneer. When you press the uveneer, you actually break the internal bubbles and you block the oxygen inhibition layer. There is an external line so you can position the, the uveneer parallel to the middle of the face and you remove it. Once you remove it, you will get a beautiful glossy surface. 
you just touch up the external, the periphery. And it's ready. We're going to talk about cases. I'll show you cases. So the U veneer has two sizes, large and medium, premolar to premolar, upper and lower teeth. So in large and in medium. About two months ago, we came up with a new kit with irregular sizes, with extra large, with uh, square and triangle some and a little bit smaller. And those, this is called ex, uh, Uvenir Extra. We're not going to talk about this today, maybe touch it a little bit, because this kit will, the, the original one will fit to most of your patients. Um, it is an autoclavable system. You have to understand uh, you, it, you, it is made out of fiberglass. Uh, it's very durable. You just wipe it with alcohol wipe after you finish and you autoclave it. You can autoclave it up to hundreds time. Uh, it has a non-stick surface. So there is like a Teflon on the back. It's not a Teflon. It's something that we created with a very high polish. So the composite will not stick to it. Uh, of course, the center line, the number on the handle, uh, right or left, one or two, three. Uh, if you lose one, you can order one, uh, and it is based on the smile design proportions. What is the smile design proportions? Most of our patients, 90% of the population, our central incisor, the length will be between 10.4 millimeter to 11.2. This is when they come up with studies. Uvenir has the same, the big one is 10, uh, the, the big one is 11.4 and the medium one is 10.2. It has 80% width to length, the centrals, where the uvenir have it as well. The lateral are usually 1 to 1.5 millimeter shorter than the centrals. This is the ideal small design rules. And the gum level of the lateral incisor is shorter 0.5 millimeter from centrals. Canine and centrals have the same uh, length. This is called the smile design rules. The uvenir is based according to the smile design rules. And what is the benefit for the dentist? It will save you time, one-time investment. Any composite can be used. It will increase your profitability. It will create stronger restoration because there is no internal voids. You actually break them. You do not build it uh, by layer by layer, and you catch air in between. And there is no oxygen inhibition layer. What is the oxygen inhibition layer that everybody talk about? When we are curing a composite, during the curing, when the light comes to the monomers, uh, the monomer become polymers. And this is called the polymerization. But oxygen, if we touch oxygen, oxygen can interfere. And some of the monomers will not become polymers. They will stay uncured and this is when those composite can stain and they can wear wear more well down when you brush your teeth for example if you block the oxygen oxygen during the curing cycle let's say if you put a cellulose strip or if you put a uh, gel um, like um, uh, vaseline on the tooth okay um, glycerin sorry then, and you cure through that, then everything will be polymerized. When we use the U veneer, we're also blocking the oxygen inhibition layer. By the way, I'm gonna give you another tip. When you, those, this oxygen also exists when we bleaching our teeth. So when you bleach your teeth, your patient's teeth, don't do any bonding in the next 10 days because the oxygen that in the teeth would interfere with your bonding. And this is a case of a patient. As you see, first I sit them down and I do mock-ups. I always do mock-up for me and for the patient to see where we're heading. I like to apply the separations that were orthodontic one, the patient can bite and relax their muscles. And I do one tooth at a time. Again, 15 seconds with etch, you wash it. Apply bond, dry cure, 
and apply the composite directly on the tooth. And here I added a little bit of high fill flowable to the template. And that's another tip I'm going to give you to get a beautiful glaze from the high fill flow. 3M has a high fill flow. Voco has a high fill flow. Ivoclar has a high fill flow. And you can apply it in the template and press it on the composite. Again, I apply the composite on the tooth. First, I bought on the tooth, a little bit of high fill flow into the template, and I press hard. Don't put too much high fill flow because it's um, going to be too much uh, excess there. Then a little bit of disc on the periphery. And that's the teeth. Now look at the gloss of these teeth when we finish. This is without glossing it. This is just when it came out directly from the uveneer. What do you use for interproximal separation when you do any composite, even with the uveneer or without the uveneer? You can use cellulose strip. You can use metal metrics and pull them backwards. So just cut them for like three centimeter length and put them in the teeth in between the teeth and pull them backwards in case the teeth are very, very tight. Or you can use, and I really like and I recommend to use a Teflon tape. You can buy them in any hardware shop. And I use the Teflon tape for many other applications, for example, uh, to close an implant screw uh, because it doesn't retain the germs. The same with root canal treatments and the, uh, above, in between the filling. And when I finish the root canal treatment, or during the treatment, I apply Teflon, and I also use it also as my retraction cord. I just make it very thin. Uh, don't use any wedges. You don't need retraction cords because you don't really want to retract the gum and finish the composite under the gums. You want to finish the composite at the gum level. I will, however, recommend you if there is any bleeding or if there is any intercervicular fluid, which is very bad for composite, then you can apply hemostatic agent like Viscostat Clear or Viscostat by Ultradent and just stop the bleeding and then continue doing working. What are the application for the U veneer? You can create direct veneers, class four fractures, emergencies, class five diastemas closure, mock-up, direct or indirect, provisionals, and shade guide tabs. This is direct veneers. And that's another case of, and I'm going to show you now a case of irreversible smile. What does it mean, irreversible, uh, sorry, irreversible smile? That means that the smile doesn't follow the curve of the lower lip. And that creates uh, a funny look of smile. It looks like the patient don't really show it when she smiles. Uh, it looks older, not so much uh, appealing. So that's the case. As you can see, those teeth are intruded, which is great because you don't have to touch it. You just grind a little bit rough it. You measure the uveneer. Is it the medium or the large? You can see it's the medium. It just looks better. And you rough the tooth with burr. You can also use a sandblast. You rough it with a lot of water and dry it. Apply the edge. And I'm give you the, another tip, the 15 second rule. The 15 second rule means enamel need to be etched more than 15 seconds. Dentin has to be etched less than 15 seconds. These are studies. So if you apply 15 seconds for dentin and enamel, it is good for both. But if you leave it more in dentin, it's not good. If you leave it less than 15 seconds on enamel, it's still not good enough. So 15 seconds, I will leave the the edge and I will apply the bond. With the bond, I scrub the preparation a little bit with micro brush for 10 seconds and I wait for the evaporation of the ethanol and or acetone because the new the, the dentin bonding agents they all have acetone or ethanol or even water which needs even more time. So wait 10 seconds for the evaporation because it will interfere with the bonding, if, with the composite, if you don't wait. Air dry, the surface should appear glossy, and then cure for 15 seconds also. It depends on your, on your light. Uh, sometimes you need uh, less, sometimes you need more. Before you cure, you clean the excess. 
and then you cure through the template and this is what you're going to get you're going to get x you're going to get beautiful surface you will see the periphery that you need to clean it this is when i apply my uh, magnification glasses and i go and i clean the periphery with discs if you want to add some surface texture you can I can tell you now a lot of patients they don't really like when i do it but if you want to be more creative and artistic you can do that and then just finish only with a diamond paste and uh, the goat hair disc you can get them from every dental technician i buy i get it from my dental technician the goat hair i apply it into the straight hand piece and i just now and i just polish it now study shows that if you use diamond paste and you do the final polish with the goat hair it will stain much less in the future and this is when we finished can we use let's see can we use for class five somebody asked me uh and what about the palatal surface in case of class four okay i'm going to answer about the palatal surface yes you can use it for class five however for class five i just like to apply a retraction cord and high fill flowable composite and brush it because if you use u veneer for class five you will press it but you will get an excess around the area of the of the class five and this will take you time to remove it so just use flowable composite high fill flowable and just brush it nicely in the class five uh, and I can promise you it will be faster and more efficient. Um, I will answer the question later, even for more details. Uh, and this is when we uh, finished uh, the two teeth only. That's another case uh, of a guy that I did. This is my first case. I did it four and a half years ago, just when I came up with a kit. You apply it directly on the tooth, as I told you use an ipc interproximal cover which is a very thin cover in between the teeth polish interproximal saw in between the teeth i'm not working that fast it's just fast forward don't worry before i came in there were some really badly colored knives they just white and long and teeth that i've never had before it's brilliant absolutely brilliant now this took me one hour to do Okay, now this took me one hour. Let's talk about polishing and finishing. Um, I like to use um, diamond burrs, extra fine diamond burrs on the periphery. I use 3M discs on the occlusion and on the buckle side. I will recommend everyone to have the interproximal saw, which is serrated to open the contact points and only then use your interproximal polishers. I also like to use the packable composite on the tooth and a little, a little bit of high fill flow. And when I always say high fill flow, what does it mean? The high fill flow is more thick. It's actually like a cement, so it doesn't create bubbles but also it stain less and it wear down less because it's highly filled. It's not a regular flowable composite that you apply it as a liner. So if the company tells you this is flowable that you can use it for class one or class two on top, that's a high fill flow. Uh, it has to be filled above 67, 68 to 80 plus, which is the best. Uh, those high fill will give you the gloss and, and the packable composite will give you the strength. And I don't know if you know Newton File. Newton File was my idol. He is from Brazil and he used the uvenir as an indirect way. And I do it a lot when I do mock-ups, uh, but he actually cement them as indirect. And let me show you how he did it. It's very interesting. 
So here he worked on the lateral, which is a little bit worn down and fractured. So you choose the right veneer, you measure it on the tooth. You see how much is missing? Here he used Vitalessence by Ultradent, and he applied it into the template. And when I do mock-ups, just want to show the patient how it looks, I do the same. I apply it to the template, and he presses it. I don't press too hard, I press lightly, because it's easier for me to remove it when I don't press too hard. Uvenir comes very easily, and now he will flip it out. You can put Vaseline on the tooth if you don't, if you're afraid it will stuck. He works on the periphery. Again, he used the 3M, the polishing disc. He put some diamond paste with the goat hair and he applied into the tooth. He actually cemented them with a flowable composite and he also applied, he told me himself that he put it in the microwave for 10 minutes, but I have nothing that I've read about it. I'm sure he knows what he's doing. And then he cemented it back. What do you use in between the teeth? We discuss it. You can do mock-up. And I do a lot of mock-ups with you veneer. And the reason I do mock-up with this, and even if you don't have you veneer, do a lot of mock-ups. Show the patient how it can look, motivate them. I use it as my marketing tool. I do not charge for my mock-up. They, they done, I'm, I'm enjoying doing them as well. And also they done very quickly. Um, you don't need, um, to use the complicated smile design softwares because patients can see the direct result in their mouth. Uh, they can be convinced, especially women. We like to see how it will look. Uh, those, uh, sorry, but those DSD, they are taking too much time. They're expensive for what they are, in my opinion. And I can convince the patient more if I do composite direct mock-up in, in the tooth. Um, and also, it's a very good tool for me to know the shade, where I'm heading. Provisionals, you can use them for provisional for your porcelain work. You can spot etch, apply composite into the template and press, and this is what you're going to get. Here's another uh, thing you can use. It as an implant dentistry to use on your provisionals when you have the provisional uh, abutment. Just apply composite. I, I close the, the head of the implant um, with Teflon tape, so I can not going to get composite into the space. Apply composite and press it with the U veneer. If you're missing tooth and you don't have an abutment, you can also build it with a fiber glove, fiber post. And I use the fiber splint. Uh, yeah, there is a lot of companies that have it. Uh, I think you, you should have it in your country as well. It's a splint that you, it's like fiber splint. You apply it in between the teeth, the etch and bond, and then you apply some flowable composite to create the, the pontic. You veneer, and you can create a temporary bridge for three months until the implant or the extraction will heal. Very important to reduce on the buccal side, give yourself like one or two millimeter space on the occlusion and instruct the patient not to bite on that tooth. Diastema closure, let's talk about that. There's two kinds of diastema closure. There is the big ones, which I will do the whole tooth with you veneer. And there is then the small one, the one, two millimeter that you don't have to veneer the whole tooth. You can just close those gaps. Let's talk about the big gaps, etch and bond, and here you can apply, and this is for the question, what do you use for the palatal side? You can apply a silicone key. The silicone key is done from a wax up model that the lab has to make you. It's a little bit expensive, and I will show you a way to avoid this. Uh, in the next slides, I will show you something that we are coming up with an invention that will take out the need to create those wax up from the lab. And then let's say you do the, have the wax up, you silicone key. Do we need to make grooves on the tooth surface for more attention? No, you don't need to make any grooves. You get a very high 
retention from the bonding, especially if you have enamel. Um, so no need to any, do any grooving. Trust the bonding. Uh, I'm going to give you some tips about bonding later, which companies and, and which one are very high in bonding. Okay, so then you apply the enamel. The first layer is translucent enamel shade on the buckle side. Then you apply dentin shade on the sorry on the on the palatal side. You apply the den, the enamel shade, dentin shade in the middle, and again enamel into the U veneer. You press the U veneer, and this is when you're gonna get the result with you veneer this is after a while that the photo and it still looks amazing how to build the palatal side let's see any more question is missing tooth use a fiber post in between you can use a fiber post in between teeth if you create grooves so let's go back to the photo of the missing missing tooth where he asked if the patient is not too young and he has some fillings in between the teeth you can actually remove the fillings and you can insert a fiber post and i've done it especially for older patients yes you can do that or you can use a fiber uh, splint which is like a, a soft uh, material um, rebond is called rebond r-i-b-b-o-n-d rebond GC have it, um, so they called fiber. Okay, let's talk about the palatal side. Sorry, let's go back to the palatal side. Um, you can use your fingers, and I do them a lot. And when I have to close the small diastemas, you can use the silicone keys, or I'll show you a new thing. It's called the paladex, and. That's a good question. I'm going to stop here with the paladex. I see a question. How much the average thickness of composite that you veneer creates? The U veneer can create 0 0.1 millimeter up to nothing. If I press the whole composite out, it depends on how much you press. It can create 5 millimeter. It can create 3. Depends how much composite you apply and how much you press. If I press very hard, I can almost eliminate every composite there but you will feel how much to press. You, you will know how much to press. It takes a little bit of practice. After one or two, three cases, you will learn how much to press, but that's not a problem. If you press too hard, just cure it, rough it, and apply second layer. In between the second layer, the layers, you just apply bond. So let's talk about now the Paladex. The Paladex is a new invention. It's coming in about a month or two, hopefully, with all the situation now. Um, it is sold by our company from Australia. We'll send it to people. And this is how, how it works. This is the only one in the world at the moment. We call it palatal, Paladex, which is a palatal index. Okay. Now, let's, the next thing that you can apply composite to actually correct and fix porcelain fractures. And I do it quite a lot. Um, when I have a veneer that's broken, a crown that's broken with a porcelain delaminated from the metal, you can fix it. You can create composite, you can build composite. 
the shear bond uh, study shows is 27 megapascal, whereas um, usually composite to a tooth will be 30, 40, 50. Uh, 27 is quite high. If you do it according to the steps, you rough the tooth, uh, you will follow the step of my next slides, and you will apply composite, your veneer, rough it a little bit, do second layer. You can even put tint, the fluorosis tint. I buy the tint from Care. Uh, I buy only the white color and the ochre uh, and the gray. Those are the three tints that I have. It's just more fun. And you can create those fluorosis effect. And this is the steps. And I would like you all uh, follow these steps when you bond composite to porcelain. Uh, you can take photos of it now with your cameras if you want to. Uh, or when you buy the porcelain repair kit, uh, Bisco has a good porcelain repair kit that I recommend. And they have all the steps there. Just write it step by step and follow it. And I can guarantee you, you can fix with composite porcelain fractures. And even if you don't believe me, there is nothing to lose. Try it. You can always replace it later. Uh, and it works. So I'm not going to go through this, but it's important to have uh, hydrofluoric acid and apply it for 90 seconds, uh, salinate it, and then uh, apply the porcelain bonding resin and the composite. You can create also for the Uvenir your um, shade guide, individual shade guide. You just apply composite into the Uvenir. You cure you remove it and then you just use a super glue and you can cement it to those teaspoons that you buy in Starbucks, you know, those um, artistic teaspoons and you cement them and you have an exact shade of your composite. You can also use the Uvenir as uh, your guide for your gum lift. If you use a laser or coagulator, uh, you don't need to guess, you can follow the Uvenir. And uh, another application, which I do, again, quite a lot, especially where you have now all on four, all on six uh, dentures with, that are screwed to uh, the dentures and the dentures can fracture, you can apply composite onto the denture. You have nothing to lose, try it. You have to use the universal bond um, with, the, with the chemical bond, not, so the new universal bond uh, has a special monomer uh, that also connects composite to uh, other materials by chemical bond. Uh, and you can apply uvenir on top and here you, and you will fix those uh, fractures of, of uh, acrylic with composite. And it works. Uh, a lot of dentists think that uh, you cannot do layering technique with the uvenir. You can do layering technique, but with the new composite, with the universal composite, that they have a very nice chameleon effect. Not only chameleon effect, they can mask very well. Uh, those, those are, um, you don't need to do so many layers. So just by the different thicknesses of composite, because the U veneer will, has a, like a moon shape, like enamel shape. So you get different thicknesses of composite in different areas. With one layer, you can create different effects. But many cases, I do two layers, which I apply dentin shade or body shade on the tooth, and I apply the flowable composite, which usually I don't buy the enamel, the flowable high fill, they will be translucent as is. And I apply, and, and I apply it directly on the template. I create the hello effect, triangles, and I press them together and you can get two layers in one go. So don't cure the dentin layer, just apply them together and then cure them. Now, um, let's talk about uh, the rubber dam. Uh, you need to work with rubber dam. Uh, we work on rubber dam, what called uh, the slot technique. So we put premolar to premolar, and then we cut a slot on the rubber dam. I'll show you, I think I have, I have it here. 
in one of the effects. I'll show you this. This is the slot effect. Okay, sorry. I'll show you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's the slot. We create the rubber dam. You see the blue? And why? Because it's much easier for me to see the actual, uh, the whole, uh, how can I tell you? I, I can see the whole picture. I can see the the vertical line, I can compare the teeth, I can compare it to the nose, the eyes. I see the whole picture when I create my cosmetic. Many times the rubber dam can, if it's fully blocked, it can block my vision. Uh, and also the interface of the gums and the composite can be blocked for me with the rubber dam. So you can do this slot technique, or if you really uh, believe and you think that uh, rubber dam can help, you can do that. As I told you, I use the Viscostat Clear to stop any intercervicular fluid uh, or any bleeding from the gums. Okay, let's go back to the slide that we stopped. And we talked about the layering technique and we're almost done. The last thing that you need to know is how to, what to, how to finish it. So avoid premature contact directly on the restoration. If you see that one tooth uh, in, a diff in a specific movement will create a premature contact on your restoration, you can equilibrate it either on the filling from the palatal side a little bit, but try not to make the filling too thin, or you can equilibrate the opposing teeth. Then instruct the patient not to eat or drink any colored food for 24 hours, and ask him not to use the tooth as a tool because those direct pressure on composite can fracture them. And let's talk about the new veneer we're coming. There is a lot of requests from dentists to come with more sizes. Um, we, we decide, and, and we wanted also to add tertiary anatomy. We used uh, the uh, library from Dr. Jean Haito. So he collaborated with us. He's part of the, the team. And he chose for us four sizes that will complement the, the, the kit. Um, and this is how uh, we created the pericamata, the really uh, distinctive, any like eggshell. You can see everything. And this was scanned from real people. It's not a lab made, it's a natural God creation. Um, and it's very hard to mimic nature. The new veneer has more uh, ana tertiary anatomy, which by the way, sometimes patients don't really like, or when they older patient, they removed it by brushing, they don't really have the tertiary anatomy, uh, but a lot of dentists, they love it. Um, you can see how everything is detailed in this new kit. It's only canine to canine. There is no premolar, there is no lower teeth. Uh, and they come in four sizes. You can see they're very, very nice. Uh, you have uh, the extra sizes have extra large, large, medium, and square with added surface texture. That's the new kit. And that's a case that was done with the extra large. Another case that's done with the large with the new kit. What do we have? Class two carriers from both sides. What about post-op sensitivity? Okay, we'll talk about it. And thank you. Now I'm ready to answer your questions. Let me just see if I can. Uh... See me now. Uh, by the way, the U veneer can be purchased in every country from an ultradent dealer. Uh, the price is around 600 American or something around there, a little bit more, a little bit less, depends on each country. Um, don't forget they are fully autoclavable. Let's see, you can still see the screen, I see. Let's see, how can I get out of that? Show screen. Okay, this is me. Can you see me? Mm, let's see if I can make it bigger. Mm -hmm. um, so here I'm in Australia, 
And let's read your, your questions. Ba -ba -bam. Uh, if you can write your question in English, it will be really nice. But if you can, I can. Sh Doctor, what lecture is clear? Okay. Tokayama, Ivoclar, 3M, they're all very good companies. Every company will work with you, Veneer. We start with question. In case air bubbles can be, in case of air bubbles can be repaired, or we need to take everything off and repeat the steps. Very good questions. If you have air bubbles, they will be on the outside, on the outer layer between the uh, uvenir and the tooth and the composite. So it will be an outer, not in, internal. So it's not a problem. All you do is just rough it with a bear, apply bond, and just do another layer. Don't remove the whole composite. You don't need to you can uh, apply composite on composite. You do it all the time in class one and class two. You add composite on top of composite. Um, what about surface in this situation, direct composite, indirect composite veneer? I didn't understand this question. What about surface TTT in this situation? Don't understand, please write it again. Any contraindication, any contraindication to you veneer? Um, there is two contraindications, as I said to you before, with a composite. If patients wear the enamel and you don't have good enamel to bond, then you will not do a composite. And another contraindication, if a patient comes to me with a very high expectations and they want their teeth to be, all of their teeth to be white and longer. Uh, that's not indication for composite. Uh, this uh, indication for a either a psychologist or a porcelain veneers. Um, ba -ba -bam, how much average thickness we talked about it. Nice kit, Paladex, thank you. Is it repairable in case of air bubble? Yes, it's repairable. You can just rough it and do second layer. Can we use direct composite veneer in patient have bite-to-bite -bite occlusion? Of course you can. This is one of the indications because composite will wear down with the uh, if the patient will wear the teeth. However, if he has bite-to-bite, edge-to-edge, and you never increase the length with composite, you will break it. So just stop exactly where the teeth stops. Um, the most work on the rubber dam. We talked about the rubber dam. Uh, when we have class two carriers from both sides, what's about the post operative sensitivity? Uh, in case of this, is a completely different uh, lecture, but uh, depends how deep it is. If you're very close to the nerve, then you can uh, build up like a bioactive material. Uh, there is a lot in the market. I use SDR by Densply, who has a fluoride. As a liner, you apply the liner, and then you can apply a little bit of flowable composite, high fill, and you apply the composite and UV on top. So, of course, you build in layers with bioactive material, with calcium, and with fluoride when you're close to the nerve. Uh, disadvantage of the UV veneer? No, I never saw a disadvantage. There is a learning curve, a small learning curve, but I always say, don't give up driving lessons after the second lesson. Uh, and the learning curves with the uvenir are usually how much to press, uh, which after one or two times you will learn, or you can try it on a model. Um, contraindication, I don't think they're contraindication. As I said, if you don't have enough enamel, or if they have very high expectation, because just uvenir or any composite veneer, they look very natural. Um, thanks, doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, okay. In case of indirect composite veneer, so you create it on the tooth, you remove it. Now you want to cement the back. You apply the Teflon tape in between the teeth. You etch the tooth for 15 seconds. You bond the tooth. You apply flowable composite, high fill flow, a little bit on the on the on the U veneer as on the veneer as well, and you cement them and light you through. Um, 
if you have a recession, the case, so you build the composite and then the, the recession area, so you'll build the veneer and the recession area, you will finish like class five. What about using retraction code for cervical service? Doesn't need in most cases, no. And the reason that I don't use retraction code and I prefer to use uh, viscostat clear, which is uh, able to stop the bleeding. If I will use retraction code and I will remove the retraction code, many times I get I will get bleeding uh, just from this action of removing the the floss the retraction code and this bleeding on the 24 hours of the bonding to the tooth can stain the area also if i will use retraction code i will retract the gum and i will finish the composite too much into the gums and when i remove the retraction code the gum will actually the composite will interfere uh, from the gum to sometimes to back and the tooth will look longer um next question how long is the shelf life of what? Of your veneer, you can use them hundreds of times. There is no shelf life for your veneer. Um, I have it. I'm glad you have it. What do you think? Um, okay, any, any more questions? I would love to hear from you on my private uh, message. Uh, or I have my email. It's sigal at uveneer.com. And I hope you had uh, a good time and you learned and um, enjoying being with you. I hope everything will be okay with this virus and we're all going to go back to normal lives. Uh, we are a bit, uh, I'm a bit sad about the whole situation, mainly sadness is what I feel. Um, and I hope you all uh, feel good, take care of your families. And inshallah, it will all finish soon. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.